Hello, I'm Steve. Welcome to the Patio Heat Channel, where we provide visual concepts of infrared heating as well as tips for outdoor comfort. Send your request in to designs at patioheat.com for your personalized recommendations. Our one-on-one -on -one customer support helps you make the best decisions for your applications. We strive to earn your business. Visit our patioheat.com website for sales and more information. Now let's get heating. All right, so first of all, I'm going to say thank you very much. This is uh, from a viewer who made a nice comment, and I appreciate that comment very much. It helps our channel so much, and even if this is something that uh, uh, isn't like your plan and you want to make a comment, we really appreciate that. So, uh, again, thank you very much, and I'm going to fix this couch here. It's not on the finished floor here, but in any case, let's go ahead and look at the overall dimensions here. So overall dimensions of this plan now, I it's slightly off on some um, of the things that I received. Um, mainly there's this uh, 11 feet uh, 5 inches. I was told that the beam on the ceiling up here is at that height. However, you know, looking at the um, elevation and floor plan, you know, I came up with a higher um, application or excuse me, a higher uh, uh point of the apex of this the rooftop over here so i um, not quite sure if this 11 feet 5 inches is true but in any case um, what I'm going to show is going to be something that's going to be very uh, similar no matter what if it's you know this 11 5 or this 13 10 that I have here the rest of the dimensions that I have here you can see I have about 24 3 and a quarter outside edge to outside edge on these posts and then um, the overall length here I have at 16 feet you can see here I'm at uh, 40 foot six inches from this edge to this edge over here and also the total distance from here to here, just so you can see that I'm trying to manipulate or mimic the uh, drawing as but best as possible. I have 52 feet six and a half inches, and um, here I have the entire uh, decking here at uh, 50 feet six inches. And let's go ahead and turn off that as well as uh, look at the height I have here at uh, nine foot eight to the top of the uh, main structure beam here and this. Um, this post here, I'm not going to call it a post, but uh, this piece here, I have at, uh, again, 1310 to the um, top there. Um, other than that, I think we're pretty close to being um, on the drawing itself. So let's go ahead and turn off those dimensions right now and look at a couple of different options. So first of all, I'm going to just say that um, the main seating area for this uh particular application is going to be on this right side. They said that uh, the doorway and there's, I think, a, a, a steps or something of that nature over here um, is not going to be occupied by seating positions. So um, they mainly want to heat up this um, right hand side over here, which is a little bit more than half of the actual um, uh, structure itself. So uh, we're going to have to do some kind of uh, decisions on where we want to really truly place the heaters but so the first uh, thing I want to show is um, placing the um, heater on the ceiling and let's see if I can find that here we go um, so what I've done here is I've taken this position from the center point here to the outer edge over here and I have placed the heaters centered in there and then also I have these heaters at, I believe, um, seven feet center to center. So these are CD uh, 6024, 6,000 watt, 240 volt heaters. And again, they're at seven feet center to center. There is a clearance that we need to meet on the heater itself. You can see that um, I dropped this edge here to the ceiling point at six inches above the heater itself so you're gonna to have to modify the bracket or you could purchase a extension bracket and on this side over here the thing I'm not quite happy about is they do have what they call a drop mount um, that is available from the manufacturer that would mount to the ceiling like this but you can see how long that is now this bar here itself will physically you know move in and out of um, the top bar 
Um, however, it only goes to a certain distance. So what you would have to do is you'd have to, you know, cut or modify each one of these bars in order to make it uh, fit in something like this. Um, so you would cut the top of this piece here, uh, this one here in blue, and then you'd cut the bottom of this and you'd have to mimic the uh, holes for, you know, actually fixing the two together. So uh, sorry about that interruption. And let's go ahead and uh, turn that off right now just so you know that there is drop mounts but there also are extended brackets so if this ceiling um, uh, pitch is a lot less than what I'm showing here there's a possibility of using um, a 12 inch longer or excuse me a 6 inch longer bracket that they have available and this one here maybe you know you only need a 2 inch you know I think it uh, actually it comes in um, two, four, and six inches extension pieces. So um, just keep that in mind that there is something that can you could do. Now, the other thing you could do is you could just eliminate this uh, bracket itself. Let's just do that for a second. And um, you could just use a chain and mount that chain from the ceiling straight down to this uh, mounting plate over here. And uh, that's another way you can actually establish a nice... Um, uh, mounting point so um, but in any case so you can see here it's centered within that span like I said and um, we'll go ahead and look at the footprint of heat and that footprint of heat is going to heat up the space fairly decently um, we're not heating up this chair here as well and you can see that the sofa over here you know it would have to really be pushed over you know slightly maybe 12 inches in order to get into that um, majority of heat output that the heater is uh, placing so um, but it's not a bad application and the other thing I was going to mention is that you could actually go off center of this beam here by I think I had it moved up about uh, 12 maybe uh, 18 inches up the slope here um, and you can see that now we're more centrally over the uh, spaces over here and if I was to move this uh, sofa back over, sorry about that. Uh, I'm trying to get into that ray here. And if I was to move that back over, that 12 inches, so it's centered in front of the window, you can see that it is much more um, covered in that space. So, um, so that would be two of the CD6024s above the seating position. This is probably my favorite just because of the fact that it is a more uniform amount of heat for the space. And um, I'm going to go ahead and show the next option over here, which is to place the same heater in um, on the wall and on the beams. And you can see here we have one here and one over here. Again, they're centrally located within this uh, distance from the center here to the, the outer point over here. And let's go ahead and I have it on the, on the wall mount here and on the beam mount over here. Um, again, we want to make sure that we are meeting the clearances. So, you know, the one thing we do have to worry about or be concerned about is that we are meeting the clearance, especially on this beam side over here. Other than that, if you mount it on a vertical surface like this and use the 30 degree angle from straight down 30 degrees up, you will be fine as far as the application is concerned uh, meeting the clearances. So let's go ahead and look at the footprint of heat and I'm going to just kind of describe why this is probably not my favorite is because if you had this heater on here you can see that you know the ray even though it's at 30 degrees you're, you're this would be okay I guess um, I'm not quite happy you know about the ray coming out this direction over here and or this direction over here but because of the 16 foot distance I guess it's going to be okay um, typically I always tell people that the furthest that you're going to feel this heat is about uh, eight feet out and you know being mean being that this uh, true dimension is 16 feet long so that actually should be okay and um, it's just another way of mounting the uh, same uh, CD 6024 Infratech uh, 6000 watt units and again you may wish to move it to the side a little bit 
Um, in this case, we're going to go with a little bit less of a distance because uh, going upslope versus vertical is a little bit different. So this we'll just go with uh, 12 inches here and maybe 16. So yeah, 16 off center from that point to this point over here will give you a little bit better coverage in this scenario here. So, all right, so that's the electric options. And then I wanna go ahead and just show one more option, especially for those who are looking at uh, possibly just using natural gas units or propane units. So this is using a uh, Sunpak natural gas heater. Um, they're 34,000 BTUs, or you could use what they call a TSH model, which is a two-stage uh, output, so the 25,000 BTU output or 34,000 BTU output. Now you'd have to come up with a mounting um, bracket. You can see that the lengths of these uh, mounting brackets are about 21 inches, I believe, or 22 inches. I'm not completely certain of that, uh, but you'd have to get an extended length for a ceiling um, elevation like this or uh, slope like this. Um, also, you could take the uh, bracket here. You can see that it's, you know, too high up here, so you'd move this down. You know, let's just go with maybe, uh, we'll go with uh, seven inches here, 7.5 and you can mount this to that uh, bracket or to the ceiling up here and then um, you'd have to get a longer uh, bar that goes up to the ceiling in order to use this side over here but these are in the same locations seven feet center to center um, and on the ends over here we need 24 inches of uh, uh, clearance on the right and we need 14 inches of clearance on the top here we meet the clearances over here so that's not a problem but uh, you can see here that the um, footprint of heat this is a little bit stronger than a 2000 or excuse me a 6000 watt unit these are 34,000 the 6000 watt units are about 20,500 roughly BTUs um, so this is a little bit more higher of an output. The only difference is, is the clearance here, as well as if this is a windy condition, uh, the burner itself is, you know, a ceramic plate. And that ceramic plate um, has to glow red in order to put out that infrared light wave. Um, if it's windy and that uh, flame blows around, then the output won't be as uh, uh, efficient. And um, if it's a windy condition, it's not something I would recommend. But let's go ahead and just move these two over again, maybe that uh, 16 inches here. And you can see that footprint is fairly decent on this application as well, as the fact that, you know, a uniform again, coverage of output heat here is very nice, nicely done here, so. All right, well, I hope this has helped and I thank you very much for watching. If you're looking for some assistance with your outdoor heating application and you'd like us to review your plans and your information into designs at patioheat.com, I'm Steve. Please tap that like button if you find this video useful. We don't advertise or not monetize. YouTube does not promote our channel unless we receive a thumbs up from you, our viewers. Thank you very much. You have an excellent day.